Hello everybody. So this video is about defining, undefining, and growing in the gifts, all right? So before we define the gifts, I want to undefine the gifts. First, don't make strict definition and strict rules for what the spiritual gifts are, because ultimately that's just going to put limitations on God. You know, it makes a box, it says this is what this is, and that's what that is, and, and really it's not how it works, okay? These gifts are just descriptors, they're generalized, they're by no means comprehensive, and, and really we don't want to put any limits on what God can do. I mean, this, these gifts are really just a snippet of what God can do through people in supernatural ways, okay? So... If you really want a deep description, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of graze over the surface of defining these gifts before I get into the teaching. Um, but if you want like a deeper explanation of the gifts, I've seen a really good explanation of each individual gift on BibleKnowledge.com. If you just Google BibleKnowledge.com slash nine gifts, okay, that'll probably take that'll take you to the site. It, it's a it's a it's got a really good definition of of all the gifts with examples and explanations. Um, but I'll go through them briefly. So in order to not make these too strict, I built, I put these in categories, okay? And, and I think that's a safe way to do it. In 1 Corinthians 12, we have the nine spiritual gifts. So the four that I'm going to go over that are in perceptive gifts are words of knowledge, words of wisdom, prophecy, and discernment of spirits, okay? Um, so a word of knowledge is when God gives you information, right? You're, you're just receiving information from God. Um, in evangelism, it often looks like picking out something about someone else's life, you know? Um, oh, I perceive that you're going through a divorce, you know? Um, or, hey, I perceive that you were abused as a child, you know? Or, hey, maybe you struggle with an addiction. So, um, a word of wisdom is a little different. Um, a word of wisdom will be more for action. It'll be more for doing. It'll be more of how to process and accomplish a task, okay? Um, rather than just information being the, the, the uh, purpose, you know, the word of wisdom is meant to accomplish something. Um, it's more of advice-like um, and, and more of guidance, okay? Uh, prophecy in the New Testament, Paul says uh, prophecies for you know edification, building up, um, encouraging. Okay, but also it can pick out people's sins, um, things like that. But but and technically these are all words too. But prophecy is usually guided towards more for the future. Okay, uh, prophecy is more the the Hebrew word was is almost means foretelling. You know, you're telling the future. Okay, so technically a prophecy is future telling, but a lot of times it, it, it's more guidance. Um, like, hey, go this way, not that way. Make sure you do this and not that. Um, but I think uh, when people really build the gifts of prophecy pretty well, you can really tell someone's future and, and tell them where they're going. Um, but that usually takes a little more sharpness. I think that when people are more beginning in prophecy, it's more like just kind of directional. Like, hey, make sure you're following God in this part of your life, and that way you don't take a wrong turn, you know? Um, then the fourth one in this category of perceptive gifts is discerning of spirits, okay? Um, the Greek gives some key that discerning is like seeing, um, but I don't think it's just seeing. I, I've seen this gift in multiple ways. Um, it, most people basically make it out to be it's telling angels from demons, telling what's of God and what's not of God, although a lot of that is just discernment in general, you know, um, but th this is a supernatural thing from the spirit. Um, one really good example, I know somebody who, when she lays hands on someone, her thumb vibrates. If it's a demon, it vibrates, and she feels a tingling in the, t in the thumb, and then she goes, oh, that's a demon. Let me, let me move from healing into deliverance now. Um, I've heard of people smelling demons. I've done that once. It just happened once. Um, um, some people literally see. I mean, I've, I've seen demons and seen angels in various types of dreams, visions, um, things like that. I've heard voices um, of angels. Uh, um, and and I'm not, I'm not I can't say that that's my particular gifting, but sometimes these things just happen to to all believers, you know. Um, all right, second category, tongues. All right, so you've got tongues and and 
uh, interpretation of tongues in here. Tongues has a, is a variety of tongues. Actually, part of the chapter has, it says varieties of tongues or different kinds of tongues. So there's different. there are different kinds. You've got the kind that a human can understand. You've got the, the kind where the person speaks in a tongue, you know, an unknown tongue, and the hearer can hear it in their native language. Let's say you've got an English speaker speaking tongues and a Spanish speaker is present. The Spanish speaker may hear the tongues in Spanish. Um, they almost, it's almost like they hear the tongues and it interprets in their mind through the spirit. Um, I can't say it definitely works like that. It's worked in every way. Uh, in the past, there's, I've heard of testimonies of people speaking in just the foreign language that they don't know just because they're they speak in tongues or or speaking in tongues and knowing what they're saying in the foreign language but not necessarily knowing the words that come out um and that can that can really cover anything that you could imagine uh so there's another kind of tongues of just personal edification and personal prayer Okay, just kind of praying on your own, your everyday kind of stuff that you do on your own at home in your prayer time. That's really the most important stuff. That's the most important tongues that everyone needs to really do that because tongues edifies us. Okay, it builds us up. It gives us a strong foundation. Everyone needs to be praying in tongues often and a lot. It should take up a big chunk of your prayer time, honestly. Um, it's super easy. It's the first gift that comes out in the Bible. Um, people get baptized in the Spirit, and they immediately start speaking in tongues, and that's it's just because it's easy to do. It really is. Just, just Once you have the Holy Spirit, you can just, you just do it. <laughs> um, uh, the, another kind of tongues is for interpretation as a prophecy, okay? And so one person speaks in tongues, the next person interprets it as a prophecy and speaks it out. Um, interpreting tongues is just as easy as prophesying. You just listen to the tongues and let the word kind of saturate in your soul and and you know or saturate through the spirit and it just kind of comes out just like it would you would prophesy or get a word of knowledge about anything else okay it's not like it's like it doesn't feel different it's really, it really feels very much the same as a prophecy um the third grouping of gifts would be uh power gifts okay gift of faith gift of healing gifts of miracles okay um, but notice the miracles is actually working of miracles, okay? Like doing of miracles, okay? Working, doing. Um, a gift of faith. A gift of faith is just uh, like you've got, you know, your faith's kind of here, but then all of a sudden, like, the spirit just drives behind you, and it's just your faith just explodes suddenly, and you just get just a big gifting manifesting for something, you know? It's just a great faith for something, and, and it just drives through for something powerful, um, gifts of healings, obviously healings, gifts of miracles, again, pretty much self-explanatory. So, truly there's no foundation or ministry built on one gift alone, okay? Because, I mean, I've heard people say, oh, I went to this healing group, but they said I need deliverance, so they couldn't help me. Well, it shouldn't work that way, okay? You, try, you should be able to help people with everything. Um, I'm not saying that we don't have specialties and, you know, people have certain ministries. That's that's biblical. It's right in 1 Corinthians 12. It's true. But our goal is to walk like Jesus in the fullness of the Spirit to manifest um, whatever gifts and whatever need people have in whatever situation, you know. Um, and that's not just for gifts. I mean, that's for if someone's hungry, if they need, if they need help financially or if they need help with whatever, you know. I mean, you want to you provide in every way you can just like Jesus did. Um, you don't want to walk in just one gift and no others, okay? You want to at least be a little well-rounded, even if you have a draw towards something, because then you're just going to have big weaknesses, okay? Then you're open to attacks and torments and death, okay? If you can't hear God, then you're going to waste your time. You're going to walk into the enemy's traps, and you're going to make a lot of mistakes in life, okay? God literally make, helps me avoid mistakes, all right? I listen to him all day long. I'm like, God, what tool do I need for this job? Do, should I bring this one with me? God, I mean, what, what what kind of needle do I need for this? You know, when I'm in the hospital, I'd ask him, what supplies do I need when I'm going to this room? Do I need this? No? Okay, I need this? Well, it seems unlikely, but I'll bring it. And I use it, you know? <laughs> like... Um, if you can't manifest power, you're not going to have your needs met. You could get sick, you could die, or you could be burdened with caring for the sickness of someone else, okay? Um, if you're not well-rounded, you're just open to these things. So all these gifts are available to all believers. So I just suggest everyone at least get some well-roundedness to them. You know, um, I really got into the prophetic gifts just out of obedience to Scripture. Paul says, 
I desire that you eagerly pursue the, pursue the gifts, especially prophecy. So I said, well, I guess I should obey that scripture and seek these prophetic gifts. And then when I started just consistently hearing God's voice for words and prophecies and encouraging people and for evangelism, I mean, it was just, it really built me up in faith. It was just, it was just so awesome. I'm so glad that, that um, I did this and God pushed me into it. But these gifts really do build us up, okay? Um... We need to recognize when other people are sharp on these gifts, too. Um, I've actually seen people, you know, have access to seasoned healers and not use that access to a seasoned healer who was willing to help them. And that's just pride, you know. And uh, I think we need to recognize when what we're doing isn't working and, and not try to, like, fight cancer on your own if you've never so much as seen a headache healed even. You know, I mean, sometimes we need help. And and that's humility and that's wisdom as well. And I'm not saying that we don't believe for for something that is bigger than what we've accomplished in the past. We should always believe for more. But what I'm saying is use wisdom, okay? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a fine balance because just faith is a funny thing. You can always accomplish so much more than you think you can. But, uh, you know, generally use wisdom. I mean... I've heard of stories of people letting their kid die, you know, uh, just don't be like that, <laughs> okay? Um, the gifts are available to everybody, right? But we sometimes need to grow into them, okay? It doesn't mean everyone has the proper faith, proper teaching, or the proper unity with God to manifest power and gifts and perceiving, okay? James 5, 14 to 15 says, if you're sick, go to the elders, okay? So he's talking to new believers, telling the new believers, go to the elders. If you're sick, they'll pray the prayer of faith and heal you, okay? And and the elders are supposed to be able to produce healing. It's supposed to. Um, it's not wise for a new believer who's never seen a healing before to maybe battle cancer or a serious disease on their own without help it just it, you know especially if there's like you know oh you've got you know a, a time frame to live like you, you gotta say if i've got this time frame how much can i grow in this time frame and, and if and if you're sick frankly that eats up a lot of time in, in itself so that's why as healers we need to be able to do things for people and help people in these ways because because when people are sick they don't have a lot of time they don't have a lot of energy and they might even have you know uh, a diagnosis that that uh puts starts a clock on the end of their life you know and and, and sick people got to be able to say if i got this much time can i grow into this in in the time frame i have okay and if you can't go get help Okay, and but if it's something that maybe is little and chronic, you can you can you absolutely have the right to say I'm going to stand in faith for myself and I'm going to grow and learn until I get this healing, and that's very respectable. And I suggest that people do that in a lot of ways. But I mean, if you're really failing and you just you've just had it, or or if you're really in trouble, go get help, please. Don't be don't be too prideful. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Okay. Part of this issue is the teaching in the church, okay? Frankly, the gifts are just kind of thrown to the side and not, and not done enough at all. I mean, there's entire chapters in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians, uh, and, and all through the Gospels. It's just tons of gifts, yet the the, the church just throws these things aside, and, and or you just believe for them vaguely, but really don't learn how to sharpen them up, you know, and to get good at them. And it's just, it's not right. I mean, we really, we really, if we can train each other in righteousness, if we can train each other in biblical knowledge, then why can't we train each other in, in the gifts and things? It's just, it's just I don't understand why where the disconnection is you know just because they're hard or because they're invisible you know it's just it doesn't make sense to me I, I think that really people just get confused by them and just don't want to do something that's challenging you know um so part of the problem is the teaching okay and and part of it is, is like there's this one teaching that says a mustard seed of faith is enough okay like that's a lie that's just a lie all right and it's a mistranslation of scripture okay um, there's, there's a few handful of scriptures in the Bible where Jesus says, have faith like a mustard seed and this mountain will move or this tree will move. Um, and it's, it is, it's the way I said it. It's faith as a mustard seed or faith like a mustard seed. It's the Greek word, hos, is the Greek word, hos, okay?
okay? It's a comparative word in this passage, okay? Um, the passage says nothing about size in the Greek. There's no word size. It's as. It's hopes as or like. It's comparative, okay? So your faith has to be like a mustard seed, okay? They translate it to a size in their own minds. And, and, the, and there's actually Bibles that say this. We have the NIV, okay, and the NASB, the NAS. I use the New American Standard, NAS, okay? And that has it wrong in it. It's not size. It's as. And I'll prove it with scriptures. So just hang in with me. Hang in. With me. There's no mention of size. So, so let's read uh, Luke 17, 5 to 6, okay? The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Notice that the disciples understand that they need to increase in faith, okay? This is the most important thing we can ask of God, literally. The most important thing we can ask is for him to increase our faith, right? That, kind of, that, that fits everything we, we would ever need in Christ, as Christians in our walk, okay? I mean, that's the, the root of everything is faith, right? Uh, verse 6, And the Lord said, If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Okay. If this is supposed to say, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, it'll move the tree, or in other passages, it'll be move a mountain, okay? Um, why would like why would the disciples, with this much faith, ask for more faith, and Jesus said, you only need this much faith? I go to Jesus, Jesus, I need more faith. Jesus says, y you only need this much. You know, like, these disciples were walking with Jesus for years at, at this point. We're in Luke chapter 17, like... Like, they were walking with Jesus for years. They've seen miracles, okay? Uh, you know, it, it's just not how it works. <laughs> it's, this is not This is a starting point, okay? But you, you put this thing in the ground, and you water it, and you give it some warmth, and you give it some sunlight, and it puts roots down, and it sprouts up, and it makes a big plant. The mustard seed's a huge plant. It takes over the whole garden. It spreads like a weed, okay? That's what a mustard seed does. This turns into... Alright? Jesus compares a mustard seed to the kingdom of God. It starts with Jesus, then the apostles, and then it spreads all over the world and becomes the biggest religion in the world. Okay? That's the kingdom. That's what a mustard seed is. It's like the kingdom of God. That, Jesus gives a whole parable on that. Yet we interpret it to say size and put that in our Bibles. Not good. Okay. It's just, it's, it's just. Mm -mm. All right. So that seed needs to grow. All right. We have a promise of a Holy Spirit. Get that Holy Spirit. All right. He's going to give us power and increase and revelation and knowledge, okay, guidance, leadings, okay, desire to obey the scripture, to eagerly seek these gifts. You reap what you sow, so sow bountifully. Look, I'm a state champ wrestler. I wore this shirt for a reason. I know it's an old shirt, beat up shirt, but it says state champion right there. See that? Wrestling, state champion. That didn't happen overnight. It took years. Okay, I worked in season, worked harder than anyone else. Out of season, still worked harder than everyone else. I worked when other people weren't working. I ran and worked and worked out and wrestled when everyone else wasn't doing it. That's how you become a champion. That's how you become good at something, okay? And I've done that with, with the gifts, and I've done that with healing, and I feel that that is the reason why I am seeing success in the gifts. And it's not because I'm a special person. People tell me that all the time. Oh, you just you just got it in you. You just got something in you. Look, I got the Holy Spirit in me. That's what I got in me. Mm. That's what I got. <laughs> That's all you need. That's all I need. That's exciting, huh? You get that Holy Spirit in you. Guess what? You got everything you need for a righteous and holy and powerful life in the Lord. It's awesome, right? Um, how do you get good at these gifts? All right? Um, so, 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 and you'll reap. So and you'll reap. So read the scripture on it. Read the books in the Bible on it. Read any books on it. Read audio, Listen to audio books on it, okay? Go to the gospel. Ton of gifts in there, okay? Jesus does all of them. Go to the prophets. Guess what? They prophesy, and they get dreams. Um, practice, 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 okay? Try to prophesy over people. Try to get words all day long. Try to, try to predict what's going to happen next. What tools do I need? What's around the corner, you know? Like, just try to just 
think of ways to hear God and things he'll tell you. Ask him to just keep talking to you so you can practice. He'll work with you. Anyway, you, whatever you put faith into, he'll work with you as long as it's something that's building you up in the spirit for his purposes, you know? And, and even if it's little things, you know, start little if you have to. You don't have to, but if you, if you feel like you want to, do that. I started little. It's good. It's okay. All right? Start a home group. Or find a friend who will practice this stuff with you. Start prophesying to your friends. Start laying hands on each other, okay? Start healing each other. Um, meditate on these scripture, okay? Mark 16, 17 to 18. That got me through my first few years of healing, and that got me good at healing, okay? These signs will follow those who believe. They'll lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover, all right? It's just, that's not even the whole passage is just part of it <laughs> you know but just kept repeating that to myself if i lay hands they're getting healed if i lay hands they're getting healed it says that you said that god it says that repeat it repeat it repeat it repeat it get my faith up faith is a big part of healing okay ask seek and knock ask god to work with you and ask him to work with you in any and every way that you can think of and that he can think of be creative go after it okay Test your results. Test your results. All right? So again, what's around the corner? What's next? I'm trying to prophesy over my life, over someone else's life. Tell me something about that person, okay? Um, okay, I think I'm hearing this about them. Then I go and I spark up a conversation about them and kind of lead it into figuring out whether what I heard was true about that person or not. I don't even have to go and say, I think I heard this. Just You can just say, hey, um, I heard, you heard something about their sibling, for example. Hey, you got any siblings? Yeah. Oh, oh cool. Okay. Yeah, what about them? You know, like... That's all you gotta do, you know, or you can just say, hey, I thought I'm, I'm trying to, I'm practicing hearing God, can I just tell you what I heard and see if it's accurate? Okay, easy, just test it. Healing, you gotta lay hands for it, okay? Um, have faith and be confident. The word of God says this stuff will work for you. So be confident in that, all right? Um, my advantage, I had one advantage starting in the gifts. I did it early before I had any bad doctrine in me. Then as I went, I got a hold of a teaching that addressed a lot of bad doctrine, and then I got good at recognizing bad doctrine, okay? I corrected a bad doctrine just now in this video. So, you know, that's really important, okay? Because I'll tell you, nine out of 10 believers have some of this bad doctrine in them, you know? Um, a lot of the Christianese statements, the, the stuff that you hear people just repeat because they heard it from someone else and it sounded good, or, or maybe it rhymed, so they're just gonna rhyme and it sounds good. You know, a lot of that Christianese lingo is just, just most of it's garbage, okay? <laughs> and if people start talking to me like that, I, like, almost automatically think, all right, this person's got no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> um, some people walk up to me, I see God working through you in the gifts. And it's like, what do you, work, you know, am I a puppet? Like, you know, they say, like, he, he uses you and this and that. And I'm like, and it just makes me feel like I got, like, a stick in my back. And God's got, like, his hand in there, and he's, like, manipulating the little puppet to do stuff. And it's like, I got the Holy Spirit in me is what I got, okay? Like, I don't have a stick in my back with, with controls. There's no remote control in heaven controlling what I'm doing, okay? It's like, just, just talk normal to me. Don't use this lingo. You know, like, I understand there's a certain lingo that we use to try to be theologically correct. But... I, I, want, I want straight talk like talk to me in English like a human being to another human being don't use like because like your definition of something is different than my definition of something okay so this is a growing thing you know in my first year of healing I saw a few small healings I got healed of a bowel disorder I had my whole life um it wasn't a super terrible disease but like I mean it, it changed my life and it, it got me going you know um, in my second year, I saw like some paralyzed limbs go free. Um, I got my first word of knowledge, you know, and, and the words of knowledge took, were, took longer for me to get going in than the healing. I found healing to be a little bit easier. Um, but now like words of knowledge are actually a lot easier because it's like, you, you can just get it, you know, you don't have to like, like in healing, I have to make someone hold still for me to lay hands on them. That takes like five, sometimes 10 or 15 minutes to get someone to let you lay hands on them. You know, um, sometimes it takes 10 seconds, but it's literally taken me a long time to convince people before. <laughs> like, But with the word of knowledge, you just get to talk. It's just, you get it and it's like, oh, let me go speak this out. That's it, you know? Um, 
if in the following years, my second, third, fourth year, I think I've been doing this for like four, maybe five years now. Um, I, I can, I'm consistently now seeing like severe pains go away, hearing loss, just easy to get rid of, neuropathies disappearing, and just, just more, you know. Um, I'm seeing like patient discharges uh, just in the hospital, just patients leaving the hospital faster than all the others, okay. Um, my wife received an entirely new organ. My, my toddler spilt you know, scorching hot, brand new pot of coffee on himself, burnt himself, the burns disappeared immediately, you know, and these things are just, they're just kind of rolling, and they, they get easier, it gets easier, guys, um, but please understand, I eagerly pursued the gifts, and I did it obsessively, ask my wife, obsessed, okay, you just, you gotta go after it, right, if you want to get good at anything, just go after it, if you want to get good at an instrument, instrument, get a book, go after it, right, get the instrument, get your hands on it, get going in it, all right, same with, same with the gifts, same with anything, you don't get saved by not hearing the word, you go and hear the word, and then you go and, like, read your Bible, and read books about it, and pray, and, and seek God, okay, it's all the same, you put an effort for, for it, you know, there, there's a, there's a place where God meets you, and you have to hold up your end for God to meet you there, okay, otherwise, like, you're not gonna get anywhere, okay, um, I encourage you all to grow as a seed. Be watered, seek light, receive the warmth. You know, that's how a seed grows. It needs conditions, you know, water, light, and warmth. Conditions for seeds to grow, all right? Get yourself in good soil. Get yourself the right conditions for growth, okay? God promises this will work. God, I can say that confidently. God promises it will work for you, the individual hearer of this video. Whoever's listening, God promises you that you can do this. And I can say that confidently because the Bible says it, okay? You can watch any of my other videos. There's a ton of them now that I'm, that I'm putting together teachings, and, and I prove that through Scripture, okay? So I can tell you with confidence you can do it. If you're on my Facebook group, the Divine Healings and Gifts Training, okay, be sure to look out the top, look at the topics section, okay, where you can get like um, specialized videos that's like it's organized into different different sections of teachings. If you want like something just on healing or something just on tongues or something just on the gifts, okay. Um, there's also files in there, and there's a files tab in the group. My YouTube channel is also organized similarly. There should be, like, playlists that you can access that are kind of organized a little bit. So, I know this is a longer video, but uh, I think there's some really important stuff in here. So, I hope this blesses you. Be blessed. Amen.